Estamos sendo gravados. Cinco, nove, quatorze participantes, dezesseis participantes. Vinte e um, vinte e dois, todo mundo entrando. Bom dia a todos que já nos veem. Daqui mais um ou dois minutos a gente começa. Tá? Só para todo mundo poder entrar com calma. So we have 28 people so far. In Zoom. E aí, pessoal? Um, good morning, everybody. Uh, we are having some problems to connect to YouTube, but it's already five past ten. So I would say that um, uh, Professor Elizabeth and Professor Fabio can start. In the meantime, we will make the connection to YouTube. So I would say, uh, Professor Fabio, Professor Elizabeth, please let's start. Hey, Miguel, thank you very much. Uh, good morning, everyone. Joining us from Brazil. I don't know that we have our, our guests from abroad. Good local time for you joining from, from different time zones. Uh, we, we are very happy today to have uh, Professor Elizabeth Santiago here with us this morning. Uh, Professor Elizabeth, she's a senior researcher here at EPEN. She's one of the co-PIs of the Methane to Products program. She is responsible for the development of new membranes, uh, ion conducting membranes, and, and she has been doing a great, very beautiful work at the really cutting edge of the science in this topic, bringing us new anion exchange membranes for several different electrochemical applications. And uh, she will present us this morning some of, the, of her results, of her group's results. So, Betty, muito obrigado. Um prazer enorme ter você aqui. E eu já posso te dizer congratulations in advance for your presentation and for your results. Please, go ahead. So, uh, I'd like to thank you, Fabio, for your kind introduction. And I'd like to thank as well 
CNE Talks for the invitation and the opportunity to show the project developed in my group. So today I will talk, let me put it in a presentation form. So today I will talk about an IO extending membranes for electrochemical system and the detailing this of technology. I am in here at Pain in the center of the fuel cell and the hydrogen. And uh, um, since 2016, I have worked with kind of membranes. And uh, so, and the history of the anion exchange membranes merges with the history of alkaline fuel cells. So, and the alkaline fuel cells is one of the first fuel cells actually employed in the real energy conversion system. So much as that, it was widely used in Apollo uh, missions. Let me put the, the pointer. Where's the pointer? Let me. Oh, options on the pointer. Oh, OK, here. Um, that's the first alkaline fuel cells. And uh, this kind of uh, fuel cell, is, uh, it was based on liquid electrolyte. And uh, this kind of uh, fuel cells, alkaline fuel cells, were expanded and, and, uh, and again in space over time with expansion of applications such as cars and tractors, boats, trucks. But and in 17, the technology, the technology is practically abandoned. And um, mainly due to problems associated with cost, reliability, robustness, safety, and mainly carbonatation. So the carbonatation is the main problem when you use the alkaline and liquid uh, electrolytes because you have the reaction between CO2 and OH forming carbonate and that trained to block the surface of the catalyst. So and in the in, in 70s as well we have a rise of the panaceas that they use solid electrolyte. So um, in 2000, the uh, Tokuyama company uh, put in the market in a solid electrolyte based on hydroxide conduction. And the AFC uh, returned to the world of fuel cells as a uh, promising devices for application in mobile and the uh, uh, stationary stationary applications. So uh, the addition to fuel cell solid electrolytes are gaining an authority as an alternative to electrochemical devices, mainly which use gas in a company. So the main difference between the solid liquid and the solid electrolytes are that in liquid we have an uh, as advantages easy processing, higher ionic conductivity. You can use a different kind of ions and the low cost of course. But you have disadvantages such as low gas sol solubility uh, and the short potential window caused by parallel reactions uh, in special and uh, hydrogen and oxygen and evolution reactions. So in addition, we have an interaction with other gases. Uh, when it's, it's very, very important when you use a, a electrochemical reactors based on gas conversion. So and you have uh, changes on concentrations that uh, needed to be uh, recovered over time, so you have to adjust the concentration of the time. So in the solid electrolyte, the gas solubilization is not required because it's not necessary. The ion, the, the gas, it goes direct 
connected to the sites of the catalyst, okay? And the wider potential with us is, 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 is mandatory here because you don't have parallel, parallel reactions. I mean, you have some parallel reactions, but in less station than in compared to a liquid electrolytes. So, so in having low or no external interference, for example, CO2. So, but as disadvantages, we have the complex process, low ionic conductivity, gas crossover and ion crossover uh, and reactants crossover, and the stability is, is compromised in these cases because you, you sometimes you have attacks, chemical attacks on the parts of the polymer. So it's very expensive uh, component of the fuel cells. Well, so answer the answer the question in the title of this presentation. The main challenges of the AEM technologies, which is still very incipient, uh, are to obtain high conductivity and performance and mechanical and the chemical stability. More than this, we needed the combination of both properties. I mean, I needed high conductivity and the high mechanical and the chemical stability. That's the challenge of the solid electrolyte area so far. So the application Wrong. Okay, so the currently the applications of AEM are in electrolysis. I can use AEM in electrolysis, in in desalinators, as, as adsorbents, in fuel cells, redox batteries, and electrochemical reactors in general. So we are focused here in fuel cells and and the uh, uh, electrochemical reactors fed with um, gases, okay? So how AEM works? Actually, we have a um, uh, copolymer, copolymer composed, composed by a polymer backbone, in general, a commercial polymer, and a, and a polymer film, I mean, uh, which can be non-perfluorinated, partially perfluorinated or full, Perforated. So to this backbone side, chains are attached. And finally, and finally, we have functional positive charged functional groups that act as, air, act as a counter, counter uh, ion to to an ion, um, uh, 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 for example, um, th this anion can be OH, hydroxy hydroxide, and CO2, and chlorine, etc. So it's important to motion that the positive charge is attached to the side chains and they don't move freely beyond the polymer. So they become the ionomeric electrolytes to achieve two, only one ion. So in ion exchange, uh, membrane fuel cells, that's the name now, but it's not alkaline fuel cell, but an ion exchange membrane fuel cells. Now, because of exactly because of the, 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 the type of the electrolyte used here. So uh, the electrochemical reactions involve the oxidation of hydrogen that forming water and the, in the releasing electrons and the reduction of oxygen uh, for forming OH hydroxide. So, and the global potential, the cell potential of this kind of devices is positive to 1.23 volts. So, um, the copolymerization, I mean, the attachment of the side chains into the backbone is also called the graphite, and it can be done by using high energy radiation, as for example, electron beam or gamma ray. 
So, uh, and the, the, the method of this um, attachment, it's called the radiation-induced grafting or HIG. So the advantages of using radiation um, are that the method is simple and effective. You can do it uh, at room temperature. And I don't need catalyst or initiators to promote the graft reactions. So it can lead to it can lead to homogeneous membranes with good mechanical properties improvements. Of course, that these properties are dependent on the um, the synthesis and parameters or optimization of rig and, and methods. So here I show the EB accelerators located at the pain and the gamma rays, uh, gamma cell. Uh, ionizing source at t -pain. bowls are located at t -pain. Uh, That's the advantage for us because, it, and the advantage for other groups, <laughs> because e -pain is a nuclear center and the dangers in radiators is a facility for us, okay? So you can use that, this facility to prepare the membrane. It's very, uh, very uh, interesting and very, and give us the free uh, liberty to, to produce the, these materials. So the radiation induced graphite can be conducted by two ways. By using simultaneous radiation and pre-radiation method. In simultaneous radiation, we have both polymer and monomer are radiated. So when you hear you form the radicals, radicals species in both polymer and monomers. So the graffiti is occurs, the graffiti is occurs by interaction between radicals from the monomer and polymer. In the pre Pre radiation method, the, only the polymer is radiated. Okay, you can be doing, you know, I, can, I, can, I can do it in inert or oxidative atmospheres, and it produces different kind of radicals. And here, you put it together, further, put it together uh, with monomer, and you have the uh, re grafted membrane. So the functionalization is um, is based on the introduced um, functional groups on these uh, side chains. So uh, the graffiti promotes the group, the introduction of uh, side chains, and the functionalization promotes the amination, I mean, the formation of functional groups. So the functional groups that you be used in the, that we use in, in AEM is a quaternary ammonium. So it, that is promoted by amination reactions. And then I use tertiary amines to, to, to produce this functional group, okay? So, Um, we have work on um, different polymer backbone. So uh, we have working on ETFE, ethylene tetraphyl ethylene, and the polyethylene and PET. So I'm going to show you uh, some results obtained for uh, ETFE based AEMs. So ETFE is a uh, uh, partially and perfluorinated membrane, and uh, that uh, that we have CF bonds and C8 bonds. So the the properties, the two properties, as I said, you know, the properties uh, 
we are the, the two properties are fundamental in the solid electrolytes for application in electrochemical reactor are high ionic conductivity and the chemical and mechanical stability. So the conductivity is given by the number of the functional groups. But to, but to have, I, I will have uh, a large number of functional groups if I have a large number of uh, side chains. So if I have a very, very good radiation, a degree of grafting, I will probably, I, I will have um, a large number of functional groups and I can achieve higher ionic conductivity. On the other side, the chemical and mechanical stability uh, are uh, related to attacks from OH on different parts of the, the, the membrane Okay, and the radiation that, that it can promote some uh, degradation on the backbone. So, but uh, we have a focus on the studies involving the backbone stability. That's what we're going to talk about. So, in here I show with some results uh, of degree of uh, graphene and the ion exchange capacity. And uh, as a function of the atmosphere, dose rate, radiation dose rate, and temperature. So here I show the membrane is produced at 20, 40, and 100 uh, radiation doses. Um, under nitrogen, air, and the low temperature, and the room temperature. I mean, low temperature is zero degrees and room temperature is something like two, 25 degrees, okay? So in here, the conductivity, the conductivity and the dog is also influenced by the radiation and the uh, radiation atmosphere and the temperature. Um, low temperature, low temperature and the nitrogen provides more stable radicals than they can use it in the grafting process. So and here I can see that not necessarily you have higher degree, high degree of gravity and the IO exchange and capacity, you, you can have a high conductivity. Here I show you that one, for example, for uh, 100 uh, dose you have achieved achieved an uh, conductive side a conductive of 113 millisiemens per centimeter. So um, higher dose leads to lower conductivity. But why? It's expected the opposite. But probably you have an, uh, a backbone degradation. Okay, in terms of performance, performance and the stability, you have observed that the material obtained at 40 and those rate nitrogen and room temperature presents uh, the lowest uh, hydroxide conductivity loss, just 1.8. 8%. And the more, uh, it's more stable and the performance is very nice. That the performance is high as 1,030 millivolts per centimeter square. So we have published this, this paper and we show it is possible to, to have a TFE AEM with very nice stability and very good uh, performance combined. So uh, another polymer that we have used a lot is the polyethylene family. So uh, here I'm going to show you the, some results of um, uh, involving a low density polyethylene. So the first, the first challenge that you had was the graphite. 
was grafting this polymer. It's not easy. When you try to polymer to um, under uh, normal common conditions, I mean room temperature, in air, etc. Yeah, you, you have no graphite in this kind of polymer. So you try different uh, radiation conditions to, to achieve, I mean, this, um, this graphite. So we tried uh, air, nitrogen, and low and high or room temperature. So, um, Volatiline is very uh, interesting because uh, it's a no perforate membrane. So you can uh, promote a very, 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 a large number of radicals that can use it for graphene and for protein. So that is very interesting. So in uh, some LDPE, where it, uh, in the case of this, uh, radiated uh, at different conditions, you have observed that the EIC follows the same trend that you observed for GOG. I mean, you have some grafting here, and the grafting is completely dependent on the temperature and the atmosphere. More the temperature oh, than the... Oh, sorry. Oh, I'm really sorry. I don't know what happened here. So, um, I mean, and low temperature is, is more significant in the uh, GOG than the temperature. So you need the low temperature to achieve higher GOG. So uh, that, there is a reason for that, because the time of, uh, the lifetime of the radicals is so short in this kind of polymer. Here, you can observe that the radicals decline as a function of the time and the increasing the radical availability for graphite. That's the reason. So in terms of homogeneity, you have observed that uh, atmosphere and the temperature also have effect on the graphite distribution. Samples, the radiator and the nitrogen lead to more homogeneous resulting membranes. This feature is likely due to the presence of the free radicals mostly formed in inert uh, atmosphere that decay more slowly than peroxide and in hydroperoxide type species and an appreciation appreciable low quantity of radicals on the film surface leads to a lower local concentration of the gravity. So the conductivity, uh, in terms of conductivity performing stability, you can observe that membrane is radiated at low temperature, presenting high conductivity, but higher conductivity does not reflect necessarily in higher power density. For example, AM irradiating in nitrogen and the room temperature and low temperature in the R present quite a similar performance. However, membrane irradiating at low temperature present better stability or lower conductivity losses. So, so we radiate at low uh, summarily, so uh, radiation at low temperature provides better ion conductivity, but uh, that does not reflect necessarily in better performance, but uh, we have obtained very uh, good stabilities for materials produced under some, such conditions. So, An open question in the area was, does it make a difference in producing AEM and by simultaneous or simultaneous or pre-radiation? Then we have studied the AEM based on um, LDPE, low density polyethylene, pre prepared by both methods. For this comparative work, the doses rates were adjusted to obtain similar GOG and the IC values. As expected, in simultaneous methods, the doses rates are lower than doses applied in electron-free 
pre-radiation method. In terms of uh, radiation, several radical and chemical reactions are involved. Uh, the main reactions involved in HIG as a consequence of the radical formation. They are gravity. The, the, the reactions involved in, the, in both methods are grafting, cross-linking, saturation in the season chain. They are common for two both models. So the reactions will from one, let me see, one, one, and the forming, the formation of radicals to eight. Okay. Are common to both methods. I mean to to a B or gamma radiation, uh, gamma ray. Okay. Uh, the reactions 9, 10, and 11, of course, only the simultaneous method, where the solvent, mono, monomer, and the polymer matrix are exposed to ionizing radiation. Okay, And the, the reactions then, that's almost exclusive to, um, to simultaneous radiation, but involving the uh, reaction of a homopolymerization reaction involving two radicals, uh, monomer radicals, okay? Uh, we studied the influence of the rig method on the mechanical properties. Tensile tests have shown that the AEM is obtained by pre-radiation having higher elastic modulus. This indicated that the same become more rigid, more rigid by pre-radiation uh, uh, to submit it to EB. This feature is probably associated with the presence of the large number of increased cross linkages that, that was proved by gel content measurements. Okay. Uh, on the other side, uh, no appreciation difference was observed uh, on allegation at the break. That means that the reinforcement in B based at the AM did not become the IM fragile. Okay, much more. You don't make samples fragile when you observe it, for example, if you have an excess of cross as a result of cross. So also we have proposed a sim uh, simplified uh, morphological model for AEM produced by both methods based on SAS, small angle X-ray spectroscopy experiments. So we have observed the different microstructure of both types of AEM that can be explained by the differences in degree of cross-linking and the grafting homogeneity, as observed the previous. And the arrangement of the ionic groups across the membrane is primarily associated with the AEM microstructure and is very important for water and the ions transport mechanisms involved in uh, solid electrolytes. So the variation in, uh, in morphology will certainly allow water to be distributed different in both types types of AMs during fuel cell operation, for example. It's important to, to mention that the water is it's very important in the uh, ion conduction mechanism because growth and the vehicular mechanisms are, uh, are occur all the time. Uh, they are responsible for the transport of this kind of ions. Okay, so in terms of uh, performance and the stability, we have observed the better performance for materials obtained from uh, electron beam, I mean pre-radiation, in comparison to the materials obtained in simultaneous metal. And in terms of stability, then we have uh, no significant difference between the, the, the metals, using different metals. So, uh, we have a working on the raft. Uh, we have a, and, and different kinds of AM. So the raft is one of these. Uh, 
uh, Rapid is a reversible addition fragment gene transfer, and they have a uh, consistency in a polymerization with a control of the chain length. In the, ca in the case of AM, Rapid uh, promotes a control of the side chain size. So, such control is obtained by using of macromolecules called the Rapid agent, which blocks the uncontrolled growth of the polymeric chain. And graffiti, and graffiti is in, 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 the, in the common graffiti, you don't have this control. So, and here, the idea here is to control the, um, the, 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 the size, okay, of the, the uh, size chains. In this case, if you have a controlled length of the side chains, Probably I should I should have an alignment of these uh, functional groups. In these cases, you have a, a more stability, more homogeneous conduction, and a not randomic conduction, ion conduction uh, across the cluster, ionic clusters. Okay. Um, here you the craft to uh, rapid processes. Of course, using gamma ray radiation, I mean, uh, simultaneous process, uh, take into account that the need of the monomer to be irradiated as well. Okay, here you have using two types of uh, RAFT uh, agents, I mean, uh, CDB and uh, CDTC. Okay, so here, uh, I show the processes, yeah, the, the, the processes you use in, in rafter, processes involving the rafter based the AEM uh, membranes by using simultaneous method. And they will observe it that the, the extension of the, the, the graffiti depends on the solvent and the molar weight target that it's uh, controlled by the uh, RAFT uh, agent, the nature of the uh, RAFT rated. So, uh, as I said, the RAFT method is to promoted by simultaneous method. So I'm mixing with a monomer and the raft agent and the solvent is submitted to a radiation. So, and the procedure is similar to that employed in, in usual grafting for other polymers. And uh, you have obtained very successfully as GOG for the membranes. But in terms of uh, performance, we, uh, the performance are so far from the values obtained for conventional grafting, indicating that the synthesis parameters must be adjusted and optimized. So uh, in terms of stability, um, you have observed that in our preliminary results show that stability is too far from the ideal. But it is shown that you need to, to change parameters such as molar weight target, dose solvent, that these parameters must be optimized to achieve a higher performance and a higher stability. So, uh, we have expertise in organic, in organic and organic composites based on the proton exchange membranes, uh, such as DAF and PBI. So we decided to expand our experience to AEM in producing an organic, inorganic phase by in situ incorporation of the silica, for example, into resulting AEM obtained in our lab. lab. Well, the idea is to prepare an hybrid. I mean that you have an, a, a resulting membrane Okay, result AEM, yeah. and they uh, proceed an uh, in situ incorporation of the inorganic phase, for example, silica. So um, the, the idea the, of using uh, silica is due to the uh, oxide hydrophilicity that allows that uh, these membranes can be operated 
at the at higher temperatures, uh, as high as 100 to 120 degrees. So the uh, in, increasing in the temperature is important for uh, electrochemical reactors because it promotes the acceleration, the acceleration of uh, elect electrode reactions. And moreover, the, the, presence, the presence of the silica or an organic phase, phase can also act as a physical barrier to get crossover, very common in, in solid electrolytes. And it can facilitate it the water management and promoting a higher mechanical resistance. So here, uh, in this case, you have the membrane, IEM produced by uh, pre-radiation, and then you have grafting, functionalization, and the hybrid. Is the membrane is submitted to a, 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 a hydrolysis of a silicon a precursor in the presence of ammonium. So in this case, you can put everything together, stay a little bit, and you have an incorporation of the silica on the porous or in the ionic clusters of this membrane. So uh, that's the resulting and uh, in brain, you have uh, uh, obtained a very, very good uh, conductivities, uh, despite the, the silica uh, uh, is an uh, insulating uh, ion uh, component. So, but the, 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 you have obtained very nice uh, conductivity, and the performance is expected to be lower than the uh, unmodified membrane, but it's not just too far. Right? The difference is not so, so big, okay? Uh, we have worked with a uh, high density polyethylene and ultra high molecular weight polyethylene because the membranes are very uh, susceptible to graffiti and uh, you can uh, uh, obtain materials with very good content of uh, silica. So um, um, we are also working on porous AEM, aiming the application in batteries and the flow electrochemical reactors. So in these cases, it was facilitated the fluid to drain more easily. So you can use it, but you have a problem with using and uh, porous membranes because you need it to, to a commercial porous polymer film. And in this case, we have the just one we got it was porous PET. It's a PET. PET is very hard to work with radiation, so it's very difficult to to, to graffiti to 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 introduce graffitis. In, in PET membranes. So the percent, the preparation, for, we tried um, pre-radiation and the simultaneous radiations. You have obtained some dog, I mean, some degree of graphite by using simultaneous method. So probably because it rapid, it rapid because our rapid recombination, you have a, a rapid recombination of the radical in PET uh, material. So you have ob obtained graft membrane with a good uh, a GOG and, and a good IUC. But when you put our membranes for functionalization, in the functionalization process, you have observed degradation during amination. Maybe because I have an excessive of grafting, excessive grafting. And then, curiously, you have a, a degrad completely dissolution to uh, ion exchange. I mean, when I was changing things, chloride from chloride to O8. So uh, maybe we need to graft 
control to obtain lower GOG. That's an open question. And uh, maybe you should have uh, poor expansion. I need uh, to control the porous expansion by Rafti, it's another idea. And uh, all promoting porosity and result EM by femtosecond laser. That's an, another open question. So, and finally, I will show you, uh, uh, show to you uh, some uh, advances in solid ion numbers. So, uh, ion numbers are the components of gas diffusion electrodes for uh, gas. Uh, Based uh, devices. So, why solid? Why uh, uh, powder ionomers? Because uh, it's very difficult to formulate dispersions or ionomer solutions without deterioration of their chemical properties. When I talk about uh, AM. Why? Because you have a lot of effects. You have a lot of, of uh, points in the material that you be attacked by chemicals and solvents and uh, OAT, I mean, different chemicals. So, uh, but uh, advances in AEA and AI development are disesperated. Uh, and you use então so unpowered AI. So uh, here we started working with TFE that she was working uh, with a uh, collaboration with Professor John Varco, and uh, we have obtained the. Uh, you can observe from these images that the powered uh, is agglomerated are attached directly on the carbon fibers on the, of the total carbon paper GDL. So even having a very large particles. However, the stability is still a problem. You have a deviation of these uh, materials during operations. So searching for performance stability, ultra high Molecular ray polyethylene powders have been synthesized, and the preliminary results showed a broad range of EIC depending on the EB dose rate. It's fine to reduce the conductivity and water absorb absorption capacity to obtain performance and stability. So, uh, results, preliminary results in single fuel cells have shown that the ultra high can improve the performance of fuel cell. You have obtained performance power densities of 1.6 um, watts per centimeter squared, which is considered very, very good, uh, excellent. But uh, the stability is a, it's a incognito. Now you needed to know about the stability and the I. We are finger crossed that you can obtain a stability for this material as well. So that's my collaboration. It's not possible. This, this, this large number of projects and in, and the work it uh, was not possible without collaboration. And for that, I have a very 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 good collaboration with Professor Don Varco and at University of Surrey, we are working in, in fuel cells. Professor Dario Dekio at the Israel Institute of Technology. Uh, uh, we have an, a partnership in the fuel cells as well. And a Professor Stephen Holdcroft uh, and a lot of postdoc is, is going to, to Simon Fraser University, working with Professor Stephen Holdcroft in our area of electrolysis. And we started a conversation with Professor Christina Yoju at the Grenoble Institute of Engineering. In actually, we are trying a, a partnership in the batteries, application of our membranes in, in batteries. And um, Marcelo do Carmo is uh, uh, a collaborator in, in CINI in the area of uh, methane conversion and the electrolysis production 
uh, hydrogen fluorine electrolysis, and Professor John uh, Jose Fernando Rey at UFBC in Brazil, uh, Alexandre Lanfredo, FBC, Fabio Fonseca at IPEN, Ademar Lugão at IPEN, Cauê Ribeiro at Embrapa, and Dr. Rogério Souza, UFBC, and Professor Orlando Rodriguez Jr. at IPEN. So, which was not possible without my dream team. It's not a team, it's a, my dream team. And uh, it's composed by Ana Laura Biancola, it's postdoc, as to put Ana Laura work in preparation of these membranes for fuel cells and uh, electrolysis. Yasuko Kodama is postdoc and is, is expert in rafting and rafting uh, uh, process. Andre Barbosa working on uh, poly clean LGPE and to to methane conversion and Bianca Pedrosa is postdoc um, uh, postdoc and the, she work is on um, hybrids and the porous membrane and the Bruno Pereira undergraduate student working on and solid ionomers and the Lou Cianteen and work in uh, high density uh, polyethylene for methane conversion. I would like to, to thank you for for patience and attention, and I'm open for questions. Thank you so much. I'm back. I All right. So. Thank you very much, Betch. Thank you very much for this. A very comprehensive and detailed presentation on all the systematic work that has been carried on here at EPANG for developing such membranes. We, we are open for questions. Please feel free to, to shoot your questions. You can use the questions and answers button here on, on the Zoom platform. And uh, just let you know, be curious, don't be ashamed. Just shoot your questions. We have, we have two questions from Miguel Galante. Thanks for the excellent talk. In your opinion, what is currently the most promising AEM technology, type of backbone and your number for CO2 electrolyzers? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Because it's electro <laughs> electrolysis is very complicated because you use very very negative potentials. So uh, uh, I don't know. I I'm confident that uh, a high density polyethylene and ultra high polyethylene are very promising candidates for electro for AM in electrolysis. I think so, but that I'm not sure. I think that nobody has this question, this answer. <laughs> this is a very brand new direction here. Now the AEM electrolyzers are, are on the spot right now. We are actually starting, I think that you've mentioned that this collaboration with uh, Marcelo Carmo, who has just recently moved from Jülich Forschungszentrum to, to, to Nell company as an, an electrolyzer supplier. They, they, they are doing a great job over there and this will for sure expand the applications of the anion exchange membranes. Miguel yeah, made exactly. a second. Yeah, Miguel made a second question here. Is high energy radiation also used for the large scale production of commercially available membranes? Yeah, of course, it's possible. That's the, the, the main advantage of that because you can use large, large, large membranes and you can use it. Of course, you have some, you have some adjustment of the, 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 the synthesis parameters optimization of that, but uh, in general, it's possible to to to, to produce 
in membranes in scale-up conditions. Yeah, I mean, people usually they are not used to this, but this radiation technology that we have here at Epping, you know, we have li really literally industrial facilities. So people use those radiation exactly. uh, chambers, let's say, for very large processes, including many, many industrial applications yeah, already. It's, it's this is a for current us, use of you know, but exactly. Yeah. It is for us. And then that's all. Uh, Betty, could you could you add something about the 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 preliminary results that you guys have on, on methane conversion? Yeah, yeah. Methane conversion is uh, yeah. We have a very nice, but in the, in the methane conversion and the problem is. is the catalyst, the node, it's not the membrane. You have obtained a very nice, very good membrane for that, very stable and a very, um, with very with high conductivity and um, uh, you have no problem with membrane. The problem is actually is in, is in, in a node that you have an acceleratory and catalyst for methane conversion depends on the, the product that you want. So uh, we have obtained the um, uh, use and a combination of a bifunctional um, catalyst and, and the membranes you have obtained and products um, from uh, methane oxidation, oxidation such as um, methanol, um, acetone, um, uh, what else, ethanol, you have a large number of products. We have a problem is to identify this, uh, this byproduct, you know, but the membrane is a very uh, consolidated as uh, ETFE works very well. So it's uh, consolidated. The problem actually is on um, a node on the catalyst. Okay. And Beth, two things. Uh, concerning the stability of the AEMs, oh, how, how far are they from, from, from actual applications? And uh, you know, what, what are the targets for, for stability that you are aiming at? Yeah, the target is the same that the Nafium, for example. The state of the art of solid electrolyte is nothing. And the knife has a stability of 60,000 hours. So it's true. It's, a, it's a, I mean, it's, it's, it's excellent. AEM, it, I think that AEM, is, AEM don't achieve this, this uh, lifetime. Because and the structure of the knife is completely different of AEM. You have some CH, you have some sites that you can suffer attacks from everyone. So you all, uh, is completely different because it's composed basically to, to CF bonds and, uh, and the CF bonds is very stable. So that's for mechanical and chemical stability to nothing. And in the EM you have several Point is, you know, several sites for attack. So, um, I but the target is obtaining a, a, a lifetime, something like 10,000 hours, something like that. I would be very happy if I achieve it. this lifetime. <laughs> very happy. <laughs> Actually, today we try to 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 achieve 1,000 hours. But the target is at least 10,000 hours. All right, thank you. All right, guys, do you have any further questions from the audience? You're all free to, to, to make your questions and let us know what your comments. Don't be shy. We still have some time for 
questions? Questions and solutions, please. Yeah. <laughs> if you have Thank any you ideas, man. ideas are welcome. <laughs> Good ideas are always welcome. Good always. students too. Yeah, please. Uh, but but the one one very interesting point is that that using those NIO exchange membranes, you can really reduce the costs involved in in PEM fuel cells, right? Exactly, because they can use it, uh, no pre-shows catalyst is on an old cathode, because and the hydroxide medium, for example, you don't need it, the the reactions are the the, the um, the, actually, the oxygen reduction reaction, that's a, the limiting rate uh, step of the, the fuel cell, for example, is, uh, of course, is, is faster when you are in alkaline medium. So uh, you can use the uh, materials uh, cheaper. You can use the cheaper materials than in comparison for and compared to NFC, for example, that is acid and you need platinum all the time. So in here, they can use nickel, I can use a silver, I can use a different materials in this, uh, uh, in this me medium, in alkaline medium. And uh, the reactions are faster in this medium. That's the point. And the cost is the cost is and decreases significantly. And and just my final very curiosity, it's that just to be we, we can have the same uh, the same cost reduction also when you think about electrolyzers. I think so. I, I, I actually uh, yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, because it, 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 it electrolyzes is the same. You have an, a, an, a, a more production of hydrogen when you have a, when you are in alkaline medium. So when you can include, decrease the cost and, and you accelerate the reactions. So you have an, an, a yield of an, a barrier yield of the the the, the the hydrogen production. That's the point. That's it, the, the focus on the, the electrolyzers, these companies. Right? So they they have uh, uh, put your coins you know, in, 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 in alkaline electrolyzers because of this, because you can decrease the cost and you can uh, have uh, higher yield of the uh, electrolysis. All right. OK. OK, Elizabeth. Uh, we thank you very much for your talk and congratulations for your results. We are looking forward for the new collaborations with, uh, with Professor Holdcroft in Canada and all the results coming also from Surrey together with our group. And uh, we are really really proud of the results that you guys are producing so that's that's thank that's good, the good job up and, and thank you very much thank you very much for the audience we we thank for your kind attention this morning and we see you in the next sim talks thank you very much have a good day thank you bye